Welcome to Wisdom Trek with Gramps. I am Guthrie Chamberlain and we are on day 2366 of our trek. The purpose of Wisdom Trek is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, and to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Today is the second lesson in our segment of Theology Thursday, utilizing excerpts from the book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible, written by Bible scholar and professor Michael S. Heiser. We will invest a couple years going through the entire Bible, exploring short biblical lessons that you may not have received in Bible classes or in church. The Bible is a wonderful book. Its pages reveal the epic story of God's redemption of humankind in a long, bitter conflict against evil. Yet it is also a book that may seem strange to us. While God's Word was written for us, it was not written to us. Today our lesson is, Walk Like an Israelite. Dr. Heiser said that cuneiform tablets changed his life. He wasn't kidding. As he looked back on his 15 years of graduate school and biblical studies, the turning point on how he viewed his Bible was his course in Ugaritic, a cuneiform language that is very similar to biblical Hebrew. The class compelled him to transform Read the Bible in Context from a naive platitude to an issue of spiritual integrity. Dr. Heiser and I myself have had a Bible study epiphany. While most of us have the impression of interpreting the Bible in context, means learning from a piece of pottery here, an odd custom there, or having some factual acquaintance with who was alive, and what those people were doing at the time in their biblical events. But in his Ugaritic course, he learned that all of that can be divorced from the ancient world in one critical way. It excludes the religious and theological ideas from all of the context talk. It's easy to presume that most of the Bible's theological context was unique to Israel. Most of us learn that Israel shared some cultural customs with pagan Gentiles, like diet, dress, marriage, and family structure. But we thought Israel's religious worldview was handed down from heaven, having no common links with paganism. But that's just not true. In the context of the tablets that have been translated since they were discovered in the past centuries, changes that previous mindset. The people of Ugarit, a city-state in ancient Syria, describe their gods in words and phrases that are in the Old Testament. In many cases, word for word. Their chief deity shared the same name, which is El, as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did. But the L of the Ugarit could hardly be called a holy or biblical standard. The honorary titles and other descriptions of the Ugarit L and his primary system, Baal, are applied to God of Israel in many passages in the Old Testament. There are other examples. The behavior of prophets that use divination, such as casting lots, consulting the ephod, have clear ancient Near Eastern parallels. The design and the work of the Ark of the Covenant align well with those used in sacred boxes known as palaquins in ancient Egypt. Trial by ordeal, such as found in Numbers chapter 5, where the woman is accused of adultery that must drink a potion to test her fidelity, occurred in surrounding cultures. Terms for Israelite sacrifices are found in ancient Gentile and religious texts also. The belief that the sky was a solid part of the ancient Near Easter cosmology shared by the Bible and the notion that the seat of the intellect and the emotions was our kidneys or intestines was common throughout the ancient world. So what are some of the spiritual lessons and implications that we can learn through this? Well, discovering all this may be a little shocking, but God used this temporary discomfort to produce honesty in the biblical text. I needed to think like an ancient Israelite in order to understand the Old Testament more adequately. Israelite religion had some significant divergence from the religions of other surrounding nations, but on the whole, there were more similarities than differences. I came to the realization that the correct interpretive context for the Bible is not necessarily the early church, the Protestant Reformation, the Puritans, or modern evangelism. Those historical contexts are alien to the Bible in many instances. Instead, the context of understanding the Bible is their historical, literary, intellectual, and religious context in which they were written. Although he could have done so, God didn't change Israel's culture when dispensing his truth. He didn't give Israel a new culture that was dramatically distinct from Israel's neighbors. That choice would have produced something that was indecipherable to the people of the time. That would have undermined the whole enterprise of communication. What this means is that inspiration operates within the cultural context chosen by God in His sovereign wisdom. We cannot honor God's choice of communication strategies if we refuse to ignore the deep worldwide connection between the, both the Israelites and the pagans. The profound contextual overlaps between Israel and her pagan neighbors was a wise theological tactic on God's part. 
When divergence from Israel's theology appears in the text, and there are some dramatic, stark points of contrast, they scream for attention on the part of the ancient reader. Unlike the pagan deities, Israel's God cannot be cajoled like an idol. Yahweh cannot be brought down to earth or tamed. Lots about sacrifices were set in specific covenant context, giving a unique theological dimension. Yahweh would rather have faith and loyalty than sacrifice. And that's our short study for today. The lessons that make up Theological Thursday on our Wisdom Trek podcast for the next couple of years will satisfy the statement, I dare you not to bore me with the Bible. I trust that you'll enjoy them and, of course, not be bored. And if you found this podcast insightful, please subscribe and leave us a review. Then encourage your friends and family to join us and come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, and most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. As we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly. Love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and create a great day every day. See you next time for more Daily Wisdom.